So, we are pleased to announce that the Port Wyneme City Hall Council Chambers are now open. As of today, Monday, July 19th, for in-person meetings. Please join us as a water agency meeting and note that the board will resume hearing live public comments at this time. So the time for right now is 2.32. And uh, can we take roll call at this point? Yes, sir. Nice to see everybody's faces today. Member Bouchard? Present. Member Hernandez? Here. Alternate member Martinez? Present. Ex officio member Jacobson? Present. Vice Chair Dudley? Here. And Chair Rollins? Here. All present. Okay, at this point in time, I would like to, uh, are there any public comments? No, sir. Okay. Um, um, our city attorney, can you announce what the closed item sessions will be? Of course, we have one item on the closed session agenda. It's conference with real property negotiators pursuant to government code section 54956.8. The property in question is APN 23109019 on the corner of Winemi Road and Perkins Road. It's the wastewater treatment facility. Uh, the agency negotiators are the executive director, Brad Connors, myself, and the public works director, Don Villafana. And uh, negotiating parties are the Port Winnie Water Agency and the City of Oxnard. Under negotiation is price and terms and payment. Um, Mr. City Attorney, if I may, uh, you said wastewater uh, wastewater plant. It is the water treatment plant. Right. I apologize. I'm sorry for that. Uh, very good. Uh, so now it is now 2.33, and we will now recess to close session. Are we and, moving uh, or... Staying here. Okay.
Before we begin, um, were there any reportable actions, uh, Mr. City Attorney, on the closed session? Thank you, Chair Rollins. There is no reportable action taken in closed session tonight. Okay, great. So now I'm going to call to order the regular session. It's now 3.23. Uh, can we have a roll call? Member Bouchard? Here. Member Hernandez? Present. Alternate Member Martinez? Present. Ex officio Member Jacobson? Here. Vice Chair Dudley? Here. And Chair Rollins? Here. All present. Okay. Were there any public comments that you'd like to report out at this point? No, sir. We received no public comments. Okay. So we, uh, uh, we, there's a, can we have a motion for the agenda approval of the Port Water, Port Wainimi Water Agency agenda? Move to approve the agenda order. Second. Okay. To this. Um, oh, can we have a roll call? Yes, sir. Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Hernandez? Yes. Member Martinez? Yes. Vice Chair Dudley? Yes. And Chair Rollins? Yes. Motion passes. So now we move on to the consent agenda. Uh, we have the minutes of the Water Agency meeting for June 21st, 2021 and the special meeting of July 8th, 2021. We also have a receive and file of the cash disbursement report for June 15th, 2021 through June, uh, through July 12th, 2021. Um, we have a recommendation to receive and file the cash disbursement. Uh, can we have a, we have a roll call vote on both of those items, or do we want to separate one of those? I'm, I'll move to approve. Can, you, this one. Uh, can we just uh, go yes. ahead? Uh, you we, want, we can discuss after the motion. Yeah. I'll move to approve the items on the consent calendar as listed. Okay. So we have some. Yeah, I just wanted to double check the dates that you gave here because I have a uh, uh, the cash disbursement report for April 14th, 20. 21 through June 14th, 2021. And you said Ju July. Uh, that's what I have in front of here. How come, how is it that I have something different? My. On the, we're talking uh, about the consent agenda, right? The consent agenda number two. Uh, um, I asked the rest of the board, perhaps, what do you have down for your, my, Mine I have down from June 15, 2021 through July 12, 2021. What am I looking at? Maybe I'm looking at the wrong agenda. Okay, I'm looking at the wrong agenda. Okay, got it. Okay. Never mind. So, so never mind. <laughs> we got a lot of never minds. Uh, do we have a second? On uh, There was a, a motion by uh, Commissioner Bouchard. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second. So can we have a roll call vote on that? Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Hernandez? Yes. Member Martinez? Yes. Vice Chair Debley? Yes. Chair Rollins? Yes. Consent calendar passes. Okay, um, there is no public hearing of any sort at this point. Now we move on to the business items. The number three, which is the brackish Water Reclamation Demonstration Facility Operational Report given by Public Works Director, Mr. Villalfano. Uh, good afternoon, board. It, it is nice to be back in, back in person again, so I'm glad we're here. Uh, the plant was in operation the entire month of June. Uh, that means the SDI levels were no higher than 0.8, so we could run the membranes. Our water demand for June was 4.8. 26 million gallons per day. In May, the water demand was 4.11 million gallons per day. Last June, uh, the plant was not operational for a little over a day because the Cascaegas was working on the brine discharge line. So for one, uh, for the month last last year, 
June, our demand was 3.36 million gallons per day. And this month, United Water supplied approximately 81% of our water, Cayegas approximately 19%. For the year, we have used just under half our United allocation, so we're good right now. And for the year, we have approximately used only 18% of our state water allocation. Are there any questions? When you say for the year, are we looking at the calendar year or the water year? Calendar year. Okay, thank you. So we used less water because the um, plant was not operational for that day? Well, that was last, last, last year. Last year. We just had a lower demand. So, yes, we used less United water that day. But it was just last June we had less water. Okay. We were just a lower demand. Okay. The height of the pandemic. Okay. So um, there's a recommendation to receive and file this report. Move to receive and file. Second. Can we have a vote? Member Hernandez? Yes. Member Bouchard? Yes. Member Martinez? Yes. Vice Chair Dudley? Yes. Chair Rollins? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. So now we move on to number four, which is adoption of the 2020 water shortage contingency plan and resolution. So I get my times right. 2020 is the right year, Correct. right? We're not. <laughs> Very good. Okay. So please give the report. All right. This. Uh... This is adoption of the 2020 Water Shortage Contingency Plan Resolution. It's recommended that the PHWA Board adopt the attached 2020 Water Shortage Contingency Plan Resolution for Management of PHWA Water Resources, Water Sources. A note, the Water Shortage Contingency Plan has been posted on the City of Port Miami website for review since May 7, 2021. Appropriate agencies were notified by certified mail and a public notice was placed twice in the local newspaper. The background and analysis, every five years, the California Department of Water Resources requires water suppliers to update its urban water management plan. Every urban water management supplier that provides over 3,000 acre feet of water annually or serves more than 3,000 urban connections is required to assess the reliability of its water sources for a 20 year planning horizon and report process towards a 20% reduction per capita water consumption. Additionally, PHWA is required to submit a water shortage contingency plan, which outlines how the how PHWA will respond to various stages of drought or water shortage. The Department of Water Resources staff then reviews the submitted plans to make sure they are, have been completed, the requirements, and submits a report to the legislature summarizing the status of the plans. On January 19, 2021, PHWA awarded a contract to Michael K. Nunley, MKN Associates, to prepare the PHWA 2020 Urban Water Management Plan and update the Water uh, Shortage Contingency Plan update. The Water Shortage Contingency Plan prepares in advance a response for various water shortage conditions. These shortages could be caused by dry years, natural forces, system interruptions or failure, or chronic maintenance deferral, dropping groundwater levels, and regulatory action. The plan ensures that PHWA meets the requirements of the California Urban Water Management Planning Act and that it has wa adequate water resources to cover expected growth through multiple years of drought. The Department of Water Resources will be sent a copy of the completed water shortage contingency plan for final approval. Uh, fis fiscal impact. If the action is taken, will have no physical impact, and it has been uh, on the on the website. And uh, the consultant MKN is here this afternoon to answer any questions you may have. At this time, I'll turn it over to MKN. Good afternoon. My name is Becca Bogelski. I am a senior engineer and the project manager for this project. I'm the branch manager for MKN and Associates Ventura Office. I am here today with Cindy Esparza, who you may have met at the last city council meeting and Port Wyoming Water Agency meeting. 
um, to present about the water shortage contingency plan. Good afternoon, everyone. It's nice to see everyone uh, in person this time. Mm -hmm. um, so this afternoon, I'll be going over a little bit of the background that we discussed at last month's meeting regarding the urban water management plan and how that ties into the water shortage contingency plan that uh, is being motioned to be approved tonight. Um, so a little overview of the object objectives of the urban water management plan. This is a plan that the Department of Water Resources uh, requires every supplier uh, to submit every five years. Um, every five years, some requirements change a little. However, the majority of the plan um, is to discuss future supply and demands for every supplier. Um, as we can see here, um, these are some of the um, ordinances that, that, have to, that are associated with the plan as well. And this plan is also um, a good method to um, to develop a critical component um, in the case of any integrated regional water um, management plans. The water shortage contingency plan um, was a part of this urban water management plan. However, by the direction of uh, the State Water Board, uh, it is required to be adopted as a standalone document for this cycle. Um, the water shortage contingency plan must include six standard water shortage levels um, that distinguish from normal to um, the scarce reliability and another portion another new portion of this uh, water shortage contingency plan that's included for this cycle is um, the introduction of this annual water supply assessment that suppliers are going to be required to submit every year starting July 2022 so a year from now the state is requiring every supplier to uh, conduct an annual water supply assessment um, and submit that as well to the state the guidebook for that is not currently out yet, mm -hmm. um, so we are su suspecting that the requirements for that annual supply report will be very similar to this water shortage contingency plan. However, until the state releases that document, um, we are not fully aware of all the requirements that will be um, necessary for that. Mm -hmm. So this is a, um, a timeline that we have um, prepared for PHWA in terms of the steps that they'd want to that you would all want to look at into getting this approved by July 2022 um, when this is supposed to be when, when this assessment is supposed to begin um, so um, the, all these steps keep in mind can be changed um, and the timelines can shift a little especially once we receive an actual guidebook from the state um, but this is just a temporary guideline to um, to get the city and PHWA thinking of how they want to take these steps into submitting this report. At this time, they have not made uh, vast variations between a wholesale agency and uh, a more municipal agency, so those requirements will also be tentative once that guidebook is released. Um, looking at, into the six levels that are required for PHWA's water shortage contingency plan, um, because PHWA receives its water from United and Cayegas, um, their reduction levels will be based on any limitations that those agencies provide. So as we can see here, these shortages um, relate to the percentage of shortage um, that they might, may or may not receive from United um, and Cayegas. And so with each of these, um, we all have, or there's a mandatory compliance associated with each of these. Um, and at the time of any um, reductions that uh, PHWA may seem, may see, sorry, um, there will be um, additional actions for that. Can, can we ask a question at this point? Yes. Okay. Would the, I, I mean, maybe we'll get into it. I, I'm sorry, I apologize, but uh, I guess I downloaded the wrong document, so I can't read in detail what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. When we say 50%, will this be worded in a way where, you know, right now we have uh, greater than 50 six greater than 50 percent reduction in allocation imposed by united or cmwd mm -hmm. and some mandatory response that we're going to adopt in this mm -hmm. um are they separated within the document that says hey if it's cmwd we have one response if it's united it's another based on our reliance on those those two supply sources so like for this year right there's only a 20 percent allocation of state water coming that's a 80 percent reduction in the allocation that might trigger us if we haven't separated them or careful in the language uh as of now they are not currently separated however we can include that in the document um ultimately this document 
is to best see the needs and implement the needs that you all see to um, to respond to these water shortage conditions. So um, if any, we would, would love to include that feedback into the plan, but currently right now they are not separated. Okay. Yeah, well, just a follow up technical sure. question, I guess. We're being asked to adopt a resolution adopting the water shortage contingency plan that has these built into it. Am I understanding that correctly? Correct. Yes, in the report. So if we adopt the plan and we haven't separated it, we could be asking ourselves to do something maybe we don't want to. Correct. And this Thank you. Yeah. In a traditional water shortage contingency plan, most suppliers um, are required to implement some demand reductions that would um, encourage uh, encourage and um, enforce their uh, their customers to um, to seek different alternatives in order to lower their water usage. However, because PHWA is a wholesaler, um, they don't necessarily have the right to implement these uh, at the retail level. So. Every so if PHWA sees a reduction in their demands, they simply have to let their purveyors know about these um, actions taking place. However, they cannot tell residents of the city of Port Wainimi or Channel Islands that they must, you know, start to not irrigate their lawns on X amount of days and things of that nature. Um, so that's something that we did include here, um, just to make it clear that in this that the city does have the authority to do that. However, PHWA does not. Um, currently, in their 2020 urban water management plans, Cayegas and United have um, described their supply reliability. So as of now, we see that Cayegas does not see um, in the future having to impose any uh, reductions in allocations unless they see, um, unless they're forced to do so by Metropolitan Water District. However, United in their 2020 plan that they have submitted, um, they have uh, forecasted a decrease in their allocation to their um, to their purveyors, which is something that we that we noted in the urban water management plan as well. And so, as those notif as those uh, reductions um, start to come in, or we start seeing a more drastic action towards that, that is when PHWA will have to come together and um, decide how they want to implement those reductions that they'll see um, from their current supplier. And so with that, um, that's a little bit of background on the uh, water shortage contingency plan that is a part of the urban water management plan from last meeting. So I'd like to open up the floor to any questions that you may have from the water shortage contingency plan. And I know there were some um, questions also left over from last month's meeting regarding the urban water management plan. So um, we'd be happy to answer any of those at this moment. Yeah, I, I just had a question. So like, and I, and I kind of may have misunderstood a little bit. If we're being asked to cut back on 20 per, cut back, say 20 percent, but we can't enforce that with the general who, who is it the city then that enforces it? So uh, PHWA would enforce that to uh, uh, to its purveyors. So the city of Port Wainimi, Channel Islands and the Naval Base. After they receive that notice, they implement the they would have to implement their um, their own demand management measures and um, demand reduction actions as they see fit. So they would be notified of that reduction and then they would implement those changes as they see fit, fit for their customers. And how would they, uh, your experience, how would they enforce that to the general public? So for the city of Port Wainimi, which, we'll, which we're, we're, we will present to later, um, there's a list of these actions that take place at every stage level. So at a stage one, where let's say that there's less than a 10% um, reduction coming from um, Cayegas or United, um, there are certain elements that would take place. And some of those include, you know, irrigating on only Mondays and Fridays, or making sure that people aren't washing their cars um, ever really, or having like extra steps to implement those. So those are the demand management management measures that are included for the city of Port Wainimi um, that other agencies that are a part of PHWA can also take place. However, PHWA as themselves cannot enforce those. They, it would have to be enforced at the city or at the district level. Okay. Uh, other questions? I have uh, Nate. Yeah, uh, so in, with uh, the negotiations with some of our GMA, uh, uh, we had uh, inputted 
the effectively the word water right uh, which basically enables the Navy to receive the water necessary to perform their mission um, and there's no reduction if that if that is possible. Uh, so there is is that is that kind of language in this document or how is that as of now, that language is not clearly addressed. However, we do have in there that PHWA will make according um, will make adjustments to their allocations to purveyors as they see fit. So we don't necessarily have a step-by-step -step percentage of you know X entity will receive X amount of reduction. So it's kind of left uh, open-ended, if you could say, just to account for the special special requirements that some of the agencies um, take into consideration, but that would be something that PHWA, if a water shortage emergency um, does take place, would discuss as, as Understood. I just want to go on record to state that uh, maybe it's not intent uh, to, to uh, take all of that water or, or uh, hinder um, PHWA, the city, or Ken Island sister. Um, on, on any of this, uh, the idea for reductions of United Water would be basin wide, um, not not just PHWA. Um, the tag is really hasn't come up in, in that the same discussion, but it's very similar. Um, so I just want to go on record for that and understood that uh, we, we have some clauses in there that we could use to come to a resolution if that were the case. Okay. Dr. Marcus. Debley, Debley. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. A <laughs> uh, quick question related to the agendized document that's uh, in the link. It looks like it's for the city of Port Wayne, Are the documents exactly the same? Just one says PHWA and then the other one says city of Port Wayne, No, because the city um, is a retail supplier and PHWA is a wholesale supplier, there are certain sections that vary from each of the documents. I'm not sure if it was a mistake, but... Um, they, on the website, they should be posted as separate documents because, yeah, there are some sections that don't apply to PHWA because they are a wholesaler. Okay, so I guess that would be a question for council um, since the attachment is the city's document, not PHWA's document. Is there any issue with that? Okay, so I, I'm told the link was correct and that the document attached was there's no legal issue with adopting the resolution without the uh, appropriate uh, document attached. However, it, any action would be within the discretion of the board as to whether or not they would like to defer to this action. I, I, again, I, it's not my intent. I'm sorry. Had I been more prepared and looked it over this weekend, I would have saw that the, the link was taking me there. I did. I just I can't read the entire thing on my phone here. I uh, didn't bring my glasses or my big ones. So I'm embarrassed by that. I understand how it happens, but uh, that I wasn't prepared. Is there a big issue with us carrying this over the adoption of this resolution to the next meeting so we have an opportunity? Because I haven't seen timing wise, haven't had a chance to review. So I, I wouldn't be able to vote on the resolution because I'm really not in a position to make an educated vote. So is there a big issue with us delaying the adoption of the resolution to the next meeting? So this plan has already been submitted to the state. Uh, I think we discussed this at last month's meeting that we needed to meet that July 1st deadline. So regardless, there's going to be a change. DWR might come to us with a change regardless of what we have currently submitted anyways. So as of now, I don't think that there should be an issue with putting this off. Um, I can talk to you, John, and I know that there are some other changes that we have made um, since the that draft was posted online anyway. So we can get um, all the board members an updated copy of that as well so that they're reading the most the most up-to-date version of that document. But as of now, because we've met the deadline to submit to DWR July 1st, I don't see there being an issue with um, postponing this. Will there be a meeting in August or are we going dark in August? Let me rephrase my question. Is there an issue waiting till September? <laughs> I don't think there should be an issue. So just in a follow-up to my question, the resolution that's attached to the city's document, um, it's titled a resolution of the Port Wayne Evening Water Agency. However, um, in the section where it says now therefore 
It says the city council of the city of Port Wayne does hereby resolve. So is there, am I missing something? Should that say? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay, so with the understanding that this has already been submitted to the state under the deadline and the um, uh, some wishes that we delay this to September, the uh, adoption of the water shortage contingency plan and resolution, do we have a motion to that effect? Do, do we need a motion or is it just staff direction to bring it back? I, I don't know. Okay, uh, then I'll make the motion to uh, table this discussion and ask staff to return at the first meeting in September. Okay. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. May we have a vote at this time? Member Debley? Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Can do I we have a uh, before a quick... we move on? Yes. Yeah, I just a couple of things you might want to address between now and then. Um, I couldn't find out anywhere in this plan what IRP means, so you might want to get that clarified. And then. Uh, because this is part of the urban water management plan, if you look at the abbreviations in the urban water management oh, there plan, they are. Okay. that may help you okay. answer that question. All right. Um, but we can always add that abbreviation because okay. this is also partly a standalone document. Oh, okay. And well, then okay. under um, section 4.2.1, faults, earthquakes, and like do you have a typo in that first? That first. That's one of the parts that we've changed in the updated version. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Okay. So, all right, that. thank you. Lots of acronyms. So we have, yes. Um, and lastly, uh, we can make a, this more of a living document, so we can update this um, if we wanted to include some specific language or uh, change, like, for example, the United and the Kai, I guess, type discussion. Yes, yeah, so if there's any language or any additional specific um, details that you would like to include, um, please contact Don and you know, you can edit the PDF as you see fit and have those over and we can make those changes to make this document as um, as best fit for you, for what you all would want it to be. Thank you. So then would it be apropos for the members then to direct it to Don, any kind of amendments or changes or adjustments to the plan at this point? That would be fine. And they can directly contact you? Yeah, I think you all have my email. If not, I'll send it out again. Okay, great. And then you'd be able to take those and bring it back at the September meeting. So any other comments at this particular point in time? Great, so we have a motion and a second to um, move this forward to September, uh, the water resolution, the water shortage contingency plan. Can we have a vote then now at this time? Yes, sir. Member Bouchard? Yes. Vice Chair Debley? Yes. Member Hernandez? Yes. Member Martinez? Yes. And Chair Rollins? Yes. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so at this point in time um, is for board member reports, comments, and requests for future agenda items. We just put one of them there. <laughs> um, do we have any other comments at this time? No comments. Okay. So at this time, we move to adjourn. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir.